Torque Resources is positioned on a world-class mining belt in a country that's synonymous with copper, Chile. Sean Wallace is Executive Chair and Director. Michael Henriksen is Chief Geological Officer. Gentlemen, welcome. Thanks for having, Thanks for having us. Torque is ticker T-O-R-Q on the Venture Exchange. Now, Sean, you announced an exciting discovery earlier this month. I want to get to that. But first, can you situate Torque? What are you focused on in Chile? Sure. You know, Torque, uh, when we entered Chile, uh, there were many things about Chile that we liked. One, that it was host to some of the world's greatest deposits. Uh, major mining companies are operating there and operating successfully. Um, they have a, a very uh, robust and multifaceted, talented mining industry. So the human capital there to be able to pull off the things that you need to in a modern mining scenario all exists in Chile. And, um, you know, they have a, a, a rule of law in terms of mining that has, you know, been tested over time. So in terms of mitigating risk, let's face it, us juniors, we're all about risk. Um, uh, wherever we can mitigate it, i.e. jurisdiction, uh, we like to do so. Also, uh, being on major belts, the projects we acquired are on three of the major belts, the LNDO, the Maraconga, and the Coastal Collier. All three of our projects are in known mineralized areas. So yes, we're trying to find something where there's nothing in the sense that that's what exploration is all about, but it's in a productive metal environment. So that is what led us to Chile, and that is what led us to make the discovery we just did. That is a good segue. Michael, uh, talk about what you announced earlier this month. Well, it's a true green fields discovery uh, on a project that hadn't really been drilled before. Um, you know, we came there with the exploration thesis that there was a lot of copper oxide on the fringe of our of our land position. And, you know, our thesis was, where's the copper sulfide? And so through a combination of classic uh, boots on the ground and some good geophysics, uh, we got the combination right and we were uh, we tagged into a beautiful structure. It was 90 meters of 0.94% copper and 0.84 grams gold. Uh, true IOCG system, uh, you know, sandwiched between two of the great IOCG mines in South America, Monte Verde and Candelaria. So um, it's a single drill hole into an area that has to us all the hallmarks of, you know, probably a kilometer of perspective ground uh, when you take in the geochemistry, the geology and the geophysics together. It sure looks like it's going to be uh, there over about a kilometer. So we just can't wait to get the drill rig back out there as soon as possible and expand upon this first drill hole into, uh, you know, what we hope will be a significant discovery moving forward. Uh, Sean, can you talk about local support around the project? Yeah, unfortunately, this uh, project, uh, uh, you know, has a co small copper oxide mine on it. And like most places in Chile, um, you know, the, the, it's, they've got a very deep, uh, uh, association or, or uh, they associate themselves as mining people, much like we Canadians, we frankly, and Australians and so forth. So, you know, you still have to engage communities. You still have to uh, respect the, your local hosts, which is frankly what they are. Um, Margarita doesn't really have a great deal of population situated anywhere near it. So uh, communities and whatnot are, are, not, are, are not a big issue, if you will. Um, but no, we have had fantastic um, community engagements uh, on all three of our projects, uh, Santa Cecilia, uh, Andrea, and uh, Margarita. Can you talk about the team, Sean? Well, certainly that's probably one of my favorite things to talk about. Uh, our Chilean team is second to none. And, you know, we all come through this uh, COVID or pandemic period, and we can all talk about the things in our lives that were made worse by it, but and the things that improved. And for us, we had to look at how to do things differently because we acquired these assets, got ourselves set up in Chile uh, from remote. And the only way you can do that, I mean, traditionally, Michael and I would have been on 100 planes and, you know, not seen our kids and everything for all this time. But we were able to team up with this sort of cookie cutter plug and play team that had all the different competencies that are required to set yourself up in the country, identify good exploration uh, assets, acquire them, um, and then go execute programs on them. And, you know, I guess we, we've done that fully on one project so far, being at the Margarita. And, you know, with a lot of good hard work and a little bit of luck, uh, we have the result that Michael was just describing. Now, uh, Sean, it looks like you're funded. You were able to raise some money in March. We were. We uh, we closed off uh, financing. I won't say that it was easy. 
as, as anyone watching this, I know well, no following capital markets right now, there's certainly challenging times. Um, you know, fortunately now we're kind of getting the kind of results that uh, the people who provided us with capitals hope we would get, and we would hope, we hope we would get. And I think going forward, these are the kind of results that's going to uh, attract additional uh, capital to the company. So, you know, in a bad time, I think we're, we're sitting fairly pretty good. Copper has been a really exciting space uh, to invest in. I think a Philo Mining, which is a 10 bagger, if you bought in less than two years ago, Los Santos Copper is up five times over the same period. Ivanhoe Mining, almost a double. Uh, what's the opportunity that you see in uh, copper? I'll start with you, Sean. Yeah, well, I mean, obviously, I, I don't think I need to reiterate all the, the, the electrification and the fact that uh, the world's biggest copper mines are being depleted. And obviously, those, those producers, and you've seen this happen on a number of mines, you know, as the price of copper, which is extremely robust right now, uh, they've turned up the volume on it, so to speak. And uh, so they're depleting it at even a, a faster rate to meet the growing demands. But that same cannot be said for the replenishment uh, part of that sort of circle of metal life if you will. And so there are more dollars chasing fewer pounds of copper now, to put it simply, and not as many pounds of copper being discovered. That puts us in a uniquely uh, great position, if you will, uh, so that if we can prove up a deposit here, the major mining companies will have no choice but to, to buy us and, and probably at a pretty good premium, seeing as, uh, as what we have here is very rare, a bona fide new discovery. Michael, uh, thoughts on the copper space? Uh, I mean, I'm with Sean. I mean, we all know the, the global situation, but I, I think, you know, to reiterate what Sean says, it's hard to find these things now. You know, we're in a different phase of exploration than we were 20 years ago, even. And I think uh, when you look at, at the Margarita discovery, for instance, it's just, it's not obvious on surface. You know, it was a bit of sleuthing to get there. So, you know, we're just happy to be in the position where not a lot of copper is necessarily being found and to potentially have a discovery on our hands. Uh, Michael, uh, you had the discovery. Uh, you said you're excited to get uh, another uh, drill into there, I believe. Uh, can you talk about uh, the milestones over the next 12 months? Yeah, certainly. I mean, obviously, um, we're going to return to the discovery drill hole and start stepping up. That's job one. Um, you know, obviously we can't, uh, can't control the timing of a discovery with the markets, but you know, once you make one, you just, you persist and you, you really see what you've got. Uh, so our plan is to get a drill rig out there in the coming months, uh, as soon as we possibly can. Um, obviously, you know, our, our first thoughts are around four to 5,000 meters of drilling, uh, to follow up, um, along the discovery trend. From there, obviously, we're, we're also moving towards looking at Santa Cecilia. You know, uh, winter will be passing. We'll be getting into spring in Chile. Um, you know, we expect our community agreement here probably this month. Uh, and then it's getting ready to go up on the, into the Maracunga belt and really see what Santa Cecilia can deliver. I mean, you know, quite frankly, Santa Cecilia was a, the, the true reason we wanted to go into Chile. It was such a fantastic asset. Um, you know, and, and, and to make a discovery on top of, of uh, getting to go drill uh, Santa Cecilia is just beautiful. So you know, expect us to be drilling in Santa Cecilia probably around October of this year. Uh, and then, uh, you know, that'll be an exciting time for us as well. Uh, Michael, Sean, thanks for speaking with Kitco. Oh, thank you. Thank you. He's Michael Henriksen. He is Chief Geological Officer and is Sean Wallace, Executive Chair and Director at Torque Resources. My name is Michael McRae and you're watching Kiko Mining.